I start the recording. So please, please, please be advised. Everything you said can be used against you. Okay. Uh, so again, welcome everybody uh, in our uh, in today webinar. And when we do a little bit of exercise regarding the assembly assembly line uh, based on conveyors. So we we'll move the product, we choose the station, we fill some automatic station. I will try to show you some tips and tricks, mostly uh, during this one hour webinar. Uh, think about this uh, assembly line based on conveyor as, uh, as uh, an example, okay? So I will try to teach you as much as I can with different tips and tricks and how I'm building this model using this assembly line as kind of example, okay? So maybe not everything will be exactly assembly line based, but as I said, this is uh, only the opportunity uh, to learn some new ways to, some new, maybe some interesting ways how to model things in, in Flexi. Okay, uh, as my colleagues uh, write on the chat, if you have some questions, please write them on the chat. Uh, if it will be relevant uh, to the model I'm building, I will try to answer it. If no, uh, then I will try to answer them later at the end of the, uh, at the end of the, our webinar. Okay. Okay. So we'll start. Uh, we'll start with a new model. We're building model in Flexim uh, 2021. Okay. Uh, I will start model. With, we'll start model with some uh, AutoCAD drawing. Okay. So I'm going to use some uh, some background that we have here. Okay. Uh, this background, depending on the software, you need to resize it or change its location. So I put zero here, everywhere. And if you see, there is this white line. So maybe I will just change the color scheme to gray. So you can see the lines. This is our conveyor, uh, conveyor line. You can see it's quite big. And uh, if I put operator here, you can see it's, it's much bigger than operator. Uh, so we need to resize it because our model is in meters and our AutoCAD drawing is in millimeters. So you can scale to model units. You can choose millimeters and you can scale it. So now everything should be okay. So if you have this small line, I will do a few exercises uh, in this line, okay? So let's start. Now, of course, we'll start with source and we'll start with building some conveyors. We have one conveyor, we'll make it uh, a little less width, so 0 0.6 meter, let's say, and a little longer. You have some trouble uh, building model on the layout, on the CAD layout. You can always change your view settings to switch off perspective projection. Then you have some, I would say, 2.5D instead of three-dimensional. And you can change the model views to top. This way you can pinpoint more or less exact location where everything is in your in your layout. Okay, so let's build this uh, layout. Okay, so we have like three meter here and here, and we will have something like one meter. Here, 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 I will just reverse it. I have three station there, here, and the sink, and the end, okay? So right now, if you reset and run our model, you will see there are this boxes that go through this line, okay? Okay, so let's build something then. Uh, let's say we we'll start with some base station, some basic station. Yeah, so we want to put some station on the conveyor, and you want this operator to work on this on this station. Okay, so if you put station from conveyor station, when you put this on the conveyor, you can specify two things, uh, two important things I would say: process condition and process time. Process condition means uh, should I always process or maybe 
I should all, only process some type of items. You know, like for example, the item with some error or some not okay. If it's always processed, every item that will pass through this conveyor, through this station, will be worked on with, by operator or by automatic. Uh, the process time right now is 10 seconds, and you can always choose if you want to use, out, if you want to use operator for this process. Here also, you can choose what's the item edge. And this means when object enters, you see the moment, this means that the object will going to stop. So the center of this object will stop on this station to be processed. If, if we would like to change it, for example, to leading edge, this means that when leading edge of the box will enter the station, so it means on this line, this object will going to stop and the process will take 10 seconds on this spot. So you can specify how do you want to position the product on the conveyor, on the, sta on the station to start the process. Okay. Let's say you want to have operator working on the station. So you can always check use operator and you can easily connect this operator with the S key, with the central connection, with station, not with conveyor. And now, if you reset and run it, the operator will come to work on this object. Sometimes the operator will go inside the conveyor. So if you want to specify the exact location where this operator should stand, you can always add some network nodes to this, to this model. So I will add two network nodes in this location. You can see this uh, green direction arrow are, are quite big. So you can always right click on it and choose decrease the arrow size. So it's a little more clear now. We need to connect the operator with the A key to this node and with the A key, the second node with the station. Right now, you will click reset and run. It will be too better. Yeah, not that you will stay in this exact position when you will be working on this, on this product, on this conveyor. Okay. So it takes 10 seconds. This is like the first very basic station we we'll do next in the moment. OK, we will have simulation, we will have situation uh, when we, we want to have three parallel station on each line of this conveyor. So I would like to have three stations. So it'll be station number one, number two, and number three. And let's say, for example, here we have 10 seconds. So let's on our second stage of this process with the three stations, let's have, for example, 30 second process time on each station. And we'll assume that this is going to be like fully automatic process. Okay, so right now, if you reset, and run the model, and the product will go, it will always go to the station. And because we don't have any logic that we say otherwise. Yeah? So everything just goes through the flow because we didn't set any logic to move the product for the different stations. Okay? So maybe we we'll also change the here. Yeah, it will be, let, let it be 10 seconds. So this is like the tack time of our previous line. And we like to split this flow through this free station. Maybe for some better, better visibility, I will also change the render mode of this conveyor. It looks good because, for example, you can see that uh, the rollers are rolling. Yeah? But sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming on the visual side. So let's change it with the right click on any conveyor. Let's go to conveyor system properties. And we can switch off the render mode. Okay. So now it's just white, but it's uh, much more clear what is happening on, on the line. Okay. okay. Let's save this model because as you know, you will never know what will happen next. Okay. So we have the model, we have the we have the three station. Now let's create the logic to split this flow through this three object, okay? So we will use decision point. So here, I would like to make a decision. Where should I go? And I will connect 
all this station with the A key. Yes. And on the decision point, on the logic, on the trigger with on arrival, I would specify send item logic and destination from the list is going to be run robin output port. And run robin, it means like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So after I choose this option, after the operator finish, it will go to the first station. Oh, give me a sec. Yeah. Send my item. Yes. Yes. Reset and run. Why is it not working? It's not working because I don't have here right connections. You can see. Yes. I need to have every object along the conveyor needs to be accessible throughout the our conveyor network. Yeah? So if I can't access it, then the product won't be able to get to there. Yes? So now you can see I am splitting this flow evenly for our free stations. This is like the most simple logic. Of course, in real life, it can be too harder yeah? because right now it works, but for example, if I would change it, like here it's going to be not 30, but 40 seconds on each station, I will start having some issues, as you can see, yeah? because I'm overflowing, uh, overflowing this, uh, this, this stage of the process. So I would like to change this logic. So my logic would going to be like this. Okay, this is the point when I'm going to split the flow, but if all the stations are occupied, my product needs to wait here until either of the station finishes the product. Okay, so I want to create the logic. And this logic is a little more complicated. So it's going to be much easier for me uh, to create this logic in process flow. Okay, so I will create the process flow. And in process flow, we're going to try to create the logic as I said, as I described before. So I have three stations. When three station, all of them are occupied, I would like to wait here. Okay, so let's build this logic. Okay, uh, we will really start with event triggered source. So I want to start this logic whenever object arise on the decision point. This is start of my logic. And I'm going to name it, so it's going to be product assign. So whenever I'm going to call token product, I'm calling the, the product, this box on the conveyor, that just go and just went through, on, through this on the arrival, on the decision point number one. Of course, I also need to remove my previous logic so they don't conflict each other. So we have the source. So if I reset and run it, you will see that token will be created every time this product will pass decision point. So now let's build the logic. So what I'm going to need. First, I will use some custom code to stop the object. Yeah, so it's going to be some stop. So if I put logic here, with control, conveyor, stop, resume item on the conveyor, and I'm going to stop the product. If I reset and run it, you will see that the product is going to be stopped on the decision point because I don't have any more logic written here. So let's create some logic for these three stations. I'm going to select all of them, and I'm going to create a group and call it station. So I have, right now I have group with three stations in it. And I'm going to use this group to create the resource. Yes. Resource stations. And as a reference, I'm going to point to those group. So after stopping, I'm going to acquire 
the station. Let's call it station. After acquiring, I'm going to resume my object. So plus control conveyor stop resume resume what I'm going to resume. I'm going to resume my product. Then after resuming, I need to send my product to a chosen station. So let's get another custom code. Let's name it send to station. And with custom code, control, again, conveyor. We already have the logic here. It's send item on conveyor. So we're going to send the product and the station is going to be our station. So right now, if I would uh, reset and run this logic, is that first we'll go here, second we'll go here, and the third will go here. What will happen next? This one waits. Yes. But it doesn't move. Why? Because I'm not releasing our station. You can see the token is still here, is the red one. So this token still waits for the resource of the station. And because I didn't release any resource, it will wait until the end of the time. Okay. So let's create the logic for releasing the station. So I need to release the station, but only after uh, the station is going to finish the process. So before this release, of course, we're going to release our station. I need to put there wait for event because I need to wait for each station to finish before I'm going to release this object. So let's call it wait for station to finish. And with the sampler, I'm going to choose, for example, any station and on process finish. And then I'm going to change object from station to, for example, to a token label station. This means if I reset and run this logic, the token is waiting here. Station 2 is right there. And only after station is going to finish, then it will release the station. So it will also let know of my product. OK, you can go there and you can use it. This is very good logic with much more potential than the logic before. Round robin only works if the process is working exactly as we planned. In the real life, you can always have some uh, some breakdown one of the, one of the stations. Furthermore, if you have like some randomized time, so not forty, but maybe some normal distribution or uniform distribution, then you cannot use the round robin because it will disturb the flow. Yeah? Because, for example, if you will lack on 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 unlucky. If there be always the highest time here with the round robin logic, you will have some blockage here because this station would have in the given time a little less productivity than the other station in this process. So it gives you a great way to build the logic wherever you want. Of course, you can switch it up a little bit. So for example, you can also change your logic, when do you want to release the station? Sometimes you, you, you would like to release this, the station, not when the station finish, but for example, when the product leaves this line. Yeah. So then you can start a little bit. You can put some, uh, for example, some photo eyes and the end of each line, like for example, here, here, and here, for example. Okay. And you want to wait not for the station to finish, but you want, you want to wait for the product that passed this photo eye. Yeah. So if I would like to build it like this, I will need to have the address of the photo eye. 
So you can use the assign label to address the photo eye. And what, is, what I think is the easiest way to do it. Yeah, you can name it photo eye. Yeah, we can connect each photo eye with central connection, with the S key, with the station. Okay, maybe I will make this connector a little smaller. Okay, okay. It is connected. Now I can easily address it in the code. So if photo eye, let's call it photo eye. Okay. As a value of it is going to be token dot station because I've just acquired it. Okay. I will treat it as an object. So I can have the access to the method of this. And here I will have center object and one means first. So right now, when I will have token on one of each station, you can see I have the product, I have the station, and I have the photo eye. Yeah? So right now, instead of this logic, instead of token station, I can choose, for example, any photo eye. Let's on clear or on uncover, depending uh, on the logic here. And instead of this object, I can just choose token label photo eye. So in this logic, I will only release station. Let's wait for the right moment here, okay. After it passes this photo eye. Yeah. So you can give this process even a little more detail. How do you want to uh, how do you want to build this? Okay, I, I see there is a question uh, from uh, Martin. Yes, you can you can do it. You can do it, but in order to choose the closest one, you need to measure the distance. Yeah. So on the station, on the resource station, you can have the advanced, and you have some fields. And in this field, you can choose. Uh, is an option here. Give me a sec. Distance. Yeah. You have straight line distance from resource to pole. So here you can specify the distance and the object that you want to measure from to. And with this distance here, then later in the acquire, you can choose acquire and where distance. Yes. And for example, sorry, is going to be ordered by distance. Ascending or descending is the closest, it's for the so furthest, furthest one. Yeah. So here you can specify in this field how do you want to use it. Yeah. And this is from the puller. Yeah. So the puller is going to be here to specify also the puller. It's a little more work to it. Uh, so maybe we'll go back to it into later. Yeah. But here you can specify the field in advanced. So distance is dynamic. And dynamic distance and you can move it. Yeah. Uh, this is the straight line distance. Yeah. Uh, if you want to do it by the conveyor distance, it's a little harder. Yeah. So, but I would say the even more easy way for you to do it. Uh, so the easiest way, I would say, uh, but not, not fully automatic, is going to be create labels on each. I will call this, yeah? let's say this is this uh, free, for example, okay? And uh, this is, yeah, this, let's say one, yeah? And this is, this, let's say also two, so you have two, one, two, yeah? And with the station, then you can very easily put the label field here, called this. Okay, so this is the distance field on each of the station. Okay. And with it, you can order by this. Maybe I will just delete the order logic. Yeah. And this way, you will choose the station with the shortest distance, I would say. But we put this manual. So this is one, so it's going to be the first. Yeah. If I put here, for example, I know five. Yeah. Reset run. 
you don't choose this one because it's five. So it's the furthest, uh, the highest distance. Yeah? It also it also works the same way if you, if, you, if you would like to make some priority rules. Yeah? Like for example, I know this station is the best one, the fastest one. So I want to always choose them, choose this one first. Yeah? So then you can, you can have label priority yeah? and put this the highest number or the lowest number, depending on the ascending or descending order. Yeah? The distance on, along conveyor is a little harder. There are the special codes for it, uh, so to measure distance along uh, conveyors. OK? OK, thank you. Thank you. And for the record, the question was, uh, how can I choose the closest station uh, with the choir? OK, let's say we can move a little a little further away, okay, so we have some stations, we have some parallel stations, we have some basic station. And uh, we, we, we often have uh, uh, on this, this on, on line like this that we have some automatic machines and that needs to be loaded with something, some screw, some nuts, so whatever, yeah? So you have some machines, let's say I will make some shape, because I have some machine prepared, let's say I have some shape, yeah? So I put some shape here. I'm going to go to visual and uh, to browse. Yeah, I have this filling station. Yes, yeah, rather simple shape. I'm going to position it correctly here. So I have 90. Let's say or maybe not so high. Yeah, it looks like this, for example. Yeah, and let's say that I have some process along this station here, yeah? and then the top, yeah. like this. So each product will stop here for some time. I, let's say I will leave this 10 seconds there. Yeah. But I want the operator uh, to fill this station with parts. I would say, for example, every 100 cycles. OK? So. This is some process, and I have some operator. Uh, let's call it OP2. But okay. so this operator number two uh, is in charge of the filling of the station. Okay, but he should fill it every 100 cycles. Okay, so how can I easily build logic like this? Okay, so whenever I have a source here. Yeah. So whenever something came here, let's say on process finish, yes, if you create one token for me, every time something will pass here, you will create token here. Yeah. So I, I want to fill it every 100 item. So after this, I can just put the logics for batch. So I will have for every 100 token that goes into this batch, I want I want I want for this activity to release only one token. Yeah, recent runner you can see it's counting yeah to 100. So after this 100, I would like to order my operator to go here and to fill up this machine. Yeah, so. I will use the resource, connect this with my operator, use an acquire. I'm going to name it, let's say, operator. Here will be also operator. So I know when I need him. So I need to create some logic. Maybe I will create some. Yes. Some nodes here, okay. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to acquire it. So after acquire, uh, he needs to travel. So my operator needs to travel to this machine. Maybe I will name it like feeling one, feeling one. So he needs to go to feeling one. Then he needs to spend some delay there. To load it, load it. Let's say 60 seconds. So it's going to be uh, my operator 
busy, I can change the state, like for example, loading or some filling. Yeah? So I can see in the stats what he's doing. After this delay, I'm going to release this operator. So this is the end of his task. Yeah? So operator is going to be released. So if I reset and run every 100, the operator 8, 9, 100 is filling up this machine. Yeah. Every 100. If I want to build more of this machine, more of this logic, it's, then it's rather easy. Yeah? I can just create additional nodes, copy this machine, connect with A key, create extra stations. I can copy this logic and it just need to change my station. So it's going to be this station on process finish. And with the travel, I want him to travel here. Yeah. And the third one, the same. On process finish and travel to this, to this location. Yeah, so I have three machines that are filling by this one, by this operator. Let's say this one I will fill every, I don't know, 200, but this one I will fill every 40. Yeah, so I have different needs for filling of each machine. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so now you can see how, how it works. Uh, in this case, what's important is I'm not stopping machine for the filling. Yeah, so I can fill along the way. So for example, let's say on this machine, I'm filling every 100, yeah, but the, the, the magazine here, the buffer, the clip of this machine is for 200 pieces. Yeah, so I'm going every 100 because I don't want, don't want for this line to stop. Yeah? I can also create the logic here. As for example, I need to stop the machine for the duration of the filling. Okay, so for example, if I have here, uh, let's say it's going to be this one, this 40, this third one, yeah? So I want to stop the machine for a duration of filling. So with the source, I need to have the address, the pointer for this machine. So assigned even object to, I will write this token, I will say machine, for example, okay? So right now, if I reset and run it, then I will have tokens here. Yes. This token has each, each have machine label on it. So after, before I acquire here, I would create the logic in custom code. It's going to be stop. Stop machine. Yeah. The stop machine means that, okay, I cannot produce any more until I'm going to fill this machine. So with the stop machine, let's go to control. With the control, there's the logic of stop object. And I'm going to stop object, and the object is going to be my machine. After I'm going to finish it, so after this delay, I would resume or restart my machine. And then control resume object my machine. So if I right now reset and run, one, so I need to wait 40, yeah, too fast. Thirty-five, six, seven, eight, nine, one. Oh, it's forty. Yeah, you can see the red here. Yeah, red, red outline below the station. So you can see the process is really stopped. Yeah, and we're waiting until delay is finished, and only after the machine is filled, then I can start producing again.
you can see I have a little backlog here for a moment because I wasn't able to create, to produce as fast as I can, okay? So this is like a very simple way to create any logic when operators need to do something or <clears throat> let's call it a non-cyclical operation. Yeah, so it's not every cycle, but every 100 task, I need to do it. Yeah? And of course, then you can easily create a model when you want to optimize the number, <coughs> sorry, the number of operators that are needed on this line to not interrupt the production uh, so much, okay? Okay, so let's move along our line. Okay, let's say you have some you want to move product, yeah, like this. Maybe to show you this you a little better, I would change the size like zero four, zero two, zero one, yeah? like this. So let's say you have rather small product and it goes like this for our line, yeah? If we put conveyor like this, and here we'll put sync, for example, if we can run it, you will see that our product yeah, is going to be moved to a side. Yeah? So for example, right now, this is the leading, uh, leading edge, leading area. Yeah? But if it slides through this conveyor, then you will see it will slide like this. Yeah. Sometimes we would like to rotate this, rotate the product uh, on the conveyor, so it's always facing the same and the same, uh, the same, uh, the same, the same area. Okay, you can easily do it with the stations. If you put station here, yeah, for example here, you can process let's, let's say five seconds. This is how much it will take to rotate the product. So on arrival. You have movement logic, and here you have rotate. And in this rotate logic, you can choose how do you want to rotate your product. You can rotate uh, over angle, over some pivot point, over distance, and in this time, this this uh, in this case over time. So I want this to be rotate for five seconds. Yeah. So if you reset and run. You will see in a moment that every product is rotated. And then move forward onto our conveyor. Okay? So what's important now? I want to you need to place this uh, the station not more farther away than this transfer. So this transfer is on 1367. So if you put this processor, the station here, yeah? You won't rotate this because the product that goes here yeah, will go here, but will not go there, yeah? So you need, to you need to point this like just a little bit. For example, it's here you have 1367, I have 1366, yeah? So one centimeter before. So you can successfully rotate it and move it along the conveyor. You also have different logic for movement. So this is the rotation, yeah? And maybe I will just make some sample model just here below. So you have the conveyor, yeah? So this, this logic gives you multiple ways, yeah? So if you have the station, or maybe some decision point, it's, it's it doesn't really matter in this case. Yes. So you have this logic, you can very easily change it. If you have conveyor, and you have a decision point. So here, with this logic on arrival, you have multiple ways for the movement. If it's a decision point, and if you choose same as before over time, 
Yeah? So this means that this object would be moving alongside the conveyor with also rotating, while also rotating. So you listen, run. So it moves and it will take five seconds to rotate it, but it will still move. That's why I use here the station, because I want this pro this 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 item, this item to stop here for the five seconds. That's why I choose the station. Yeah? Because if, if I would decision point, I wouldn't be able to stop the product so easily with just the writing the five. Okay? You can also rotate this over distance. Yeah? So if I put, for example, two meters, this means that after two meters on the conveyor, it will be rotated. You can also translate items. Translate means move it. So for example, here on the movement, you have movement with translate item. And let's say you can put minus one here. Okay. So this means you can move it you can see below the conveyor. Or for example, you can move it if plus one. So just one. You can lift this on the conveyor. Yeah? And of course, then later along the line, you can copy it and you can put the translate minus one. Yeah, so it will go back down uh, on your logic. So you don't need to like uh, create a special layout for the conveyors with up and downs. You can just translate items so it will be much easier for you to build the logic without changing uh, so much on the conveyor on the conveyor lines. Okay, okay. So let's move a little more. Okay, so you have the logic. We move the element. We change everything. What's important here with transfer is also that each transfer can have information about this. So you have like side transfer, inline transfer, speed, finish time, pop up, this and everything. It's, I think it's the most important when you do some logistic uh, conveyors. Yeah? So if you have source and the conveyor, and for example, you want to move pallet through this conveyor. So you have pallet, let's make it Euro pallet because it's US pallet, so it's size different. 0 1.2, yeah. So you have here this pallet. So if you reset and run it, we see, we see the palette. And maybe we will only rotate this a little bit. So the forward is going to be Y plus. Yeah. So for example, this is our conveyor belt uh, for pallets. It goes like this. And I want this pallet to be moved on the side like this. And I want this to be the chains. Yeah, so I need to switch the type of the conveyor along this transfer. So it's not like this. Yeah? I need to stop this uh, pallet here for the some time so I can make the transfer. So here you can specify the start time and the finish time. So the start time, if I put here five, for example, right now the pallet, we need to stop here for the five seconds. And after five seconds, it will start the movement. Yeah. I can also do the other way around. So if I specify here the finish time, like also five seconds, if I reset and run it, you will see that the pad will need to stop for five seconds at the beginning of the transfer. Yeah. And then five seconds after the transfer is finished. Okay, and only after it's finished, then the next pallet can go in and, and use this transfer. It's especially useful in the logistic, but sometimes on the production line, when you have logic like this, when you have some pushers or some other you know, outer automatic uh, infrastructure there, you need to specify what will be the, uh, the transfer time for each of this situation, for each of, this, of those processes. Okay, let's continue our line. What's also pretty common uh, in, in those kinds of lines is the elevators. Okay? So for example, you have some area here. 
and this conveyor is much higher, let's say it's going to be on the four meter, four meter height. And because this, you have some, I don't know, some road and the forklifts are going through here. So you need to have some bypass uh, over this road. So you can put two elevators. Yeah. Let's make it a small elevator, let's say one over one meter. Yeah. So you have some elevator. Yeah. One elevator. Here is going to be the second elevator. And here, the rest of the line. Yeah. So we can build this rather easily with just connecting A with the conveyors and connecting the S key, the exit transfer on, on each conveyor. Then on this exit transfer, we can just use logic for use transport here and for use transport here. Yes. And now we can just reset and run. And you will see that our elevators We transport our product here. You can see it's on that this place is rotated wrong on the elevator. You can see. Yes. So the easiest way to fix this, you just rotate elevator by 90 degree. Yes, here, rotate 90 degree. And now everything is okay. If you want to lower the height, you can just put it like this. And you have a very good looking, I would say, line when you have some bypass, you need to bypass, uh, uh, when you need to bypass some way. Of course, you can also do it uh, below the ground, yeah? So if you move this below the ground, like for example, uh, minus four and minus four, yeah? So you can look below, below the ground. If you want to see it, I need to delete the model floor. Yeah? So it also work below the ground, yeah? Okay, disconnect. Yes. And you start. So you can you can build this rather easy in both ways. Okay, so let's move further away. Uh, we have some logic, we have some uh, station, some parallel station, some filling station. We can rotate, we can translate, we can move product with elevators, okay? And of course, sometimes we need to unload the element from the, uh, from the conveyor, yeah? So for example, let's say we have operator and we want operator to move this product you know, from this conveyor. To this thing, of course, it's I would say it's classic, yeah. So it's uh, no issue at all here. But you can see that this is pretty long conveyor here, and I want this operator uh, to move along the conveyor to like go to meet this product. So I don't want him to wait here. So if you if he sees the product, he should already start walking uh, toward it to take it. And you can do it with flexing. Uh, you can move this point, the side of conveyor, yeah? So you can click on it and move it to the side. You can see then it, it shows two arrows, two red arrows. You can make this area 
like this. Yeah. So like this is the area where operator can take the product. Yes, and you can check this box, continuous pickup prediction. Yeah. So with this block, you can, we will see in a moment, when object enters, yeah, we have some, oh, now it enters, yeah. The operator will start walking towards it to pick it up. Yeah. So he tries to predict where the two is going to meet. And it's a very good feature. For example, if you have multiple operators of, uh, or some kind of sorting lines, or when our multiple operators are trying to interchangeably take the products from the line to create a room for it, uh, this is something you will often, often use for it. Okay? One more thing. So maybe we'll go a little in the, in the beginning. Okay. Uh, Pretty common you have the lines where the product is not going like straight on the conveyor, but it's on some kind of pallet. Yeah? And the pallet moves through the system and the product is always on the pallet. Okay. Uh, so in this case, for example, you can create the pallet. So we create this as a, a new container flow item. For example, uh, I will change the shape to it. Let's say it's like yeah, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.1, so some maybe even a little thinner, 0 0.5. Yeah, so this is like the palette. And I want this palette to go through this line. Yeah, so I will change here to a palette. No, sorry, not the palette, but our palette number two. But I want the product on this palette. Okay. So you can quickly add it just by decision point here. Again, the same principle as before. So I will just quickly here put decision point on arrival. I name it palette and assign. And after it, I will just put create object. And I will create this box, one piece, on the part. And then, think. If I reset and run it, this will be always product on the part. It's crucial, in this case, to create this palette as a container flow item. Okay? If you do the basic flow item, it won't look so good. It will always have some issues with the placement and, and so on. And with this, you can always go here and choose the pack content method, you know, the simple layer stacking or other way around. And we also always give you a little uh, different result depending on the size and of course on the, on the logic. If you want to create the logic and place it uh, in the exact position, yeah, so after creating, you can always create, add the block, change visual, and here you can put set location. Now we need to have the address here. So we'll name it here as a token dot product. And in change visual, we change the visual of token product to some value. Let's say I will say like 0 0.5, for example, 0 0.5. Zero, yeah? So then you can specify where it's going to be. Yeah? If I want this to be like, for example, here, so it should be uh, like zero and here like zero minus two, minus 0 0.2. Okay? So you can exactly specify where this object should be. Yeah? If you want to exact, if you want to, the, if you want to have the exact coordinate, you can move a little bit yeah, here. And here below, you can see the exact coordinate. Yeah? So if I want this product to be exact here, it's 0, 010 minus 0, 016. 
So I can change it here and it's going to be 0 0.1 and, and minus 16. Okay. And reset and run it. And now it's the exact location. Uh, I choose, I'm, as, as you saw, I choose uh, this option, rotation, size, location, and then I choose location. Over this option, set location, because for me, it just gives you too many options how you want to calculate the location. Yeah? Sometimes it's good because you can calculate this location from the each, from the, you can pinpoint the, well, where do you want to be the exact corner of the exact point of your object but it makes it a little harder to get the exact result. And I know when you choose location here and when you move the product, you can just quickly write this coordinate and it will always be correct. What's important is that these coordinates are not the coordinates of the model, but they are the coordinates uh, of this palette. So when you have the coordination, so look, this palette is now 0, 6, 0, 4, 0, 0, 5. Oh, sorry, 1, 4, 5 location. And this is 0 0.3. So these coordinates are based from the 0, 0, 0, 0 point from this palette. Yeah, so I can move this palette and it will change the coordinate of this palette, but it won't change the coordinate of the product on the palette because this product is not moving uh, at all. Uh, from the perspective of this part. Yeah. You have it. Yeah. And of course, when you have this product there, you can always make the changes over it. Yeah. So for example, you have uh, logic here yeah, on the station. For example, the station, the first station. No, this is the first station. You can put something there. So you will have some palette there and operation assign. You can always get some I know, extra change visual, for example, yeah? where you want to set object color, it's going to be palette dot first, because it's something on this palette that goes here, not the palette itself. And for example, I will call it, uh, I will call it green. Yeah? So if I reset and run it, connect this, reset and run it, so whenever object go to the station, it will start to be green. Yes. I need to access it with the palette first. If I would leave only palette here, then the palette would be green, not, not the product. Okay, so a lot of small stuff, uh, small tips and tricks today. Uh, maybe question to you. Maybe you want to see something uh, different. Maybe you want to propose some uh, subject for our next webinar. Uh, what do you What do you think? Okay, so if there are uh, no questions here, oh, okay, someone, someone write something. Yes. Okay, we can build a line with robots. Okay, this is this is one idea. Okay, so. Next uh, next meeting we can maybe build some robots. So let's say some some robotic nests. Yeah, uh, we can do some animation with the robot. Uh, maybe like we can do some uh, robot movement. Yeah, so how we can force the robot uh, to move how we want it to move. Okay. Uh, okay. I see some logistic logistic examples. Yeah. I will say like this, so if you have some topic ideas uh, for our next webinars, 
uh, I think the best way would be to write us some email. Yeah, and we can see which is the most popular, and then you can make a movie movie about this webinar about this, and then put on YouTube. Because I think that uh, we tr always try to uh, build something that we think uh, you need. So write us an email about the topic you are interested in. And then we will try to uh, build a model like this. And you can, I can see some already some uh, welding process. OK. Uh, loading a truck. OK. This is this is this is all the uh, good ideas, and I think we can squeeze one or two topics like this uh, in a in a webinar. And then, of course, if you won't be able to uh, be with us on the webinar, you can put this on the on the YouTube, so you can always see it for the future uh, for the future reference. Okay, so thank you, thank you very much. Uh, have a nice, uh, have a nice week, have a nice uh, day, afternoon, I would say, and I hope good luck with your models, uh, good luck with your simulation, and I wish you no errors, no crashing, and all the best to you. Okay, thank you all. Bye, and I think that in the next few days, this uh, webinar will be on our YouTube, YouTube channel.